So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, guten Morgen. Uh, no, nicht ganz. No? Vielleicht? Okay. So my name is Frederik Weidemann, as uh, uh, Andreas said, I'm the head of consulting. Um, I'm working within the company for uh, 11 years now, doing everything from penetration testing, security architecture, breaking SAP systems, uh, zero day research, fixing the stuff, uh, running large projects. Uh, this is my, my background, so I have a strong technical background. Today I'm going to talk about uh, System Profiler. Um, System Profiler, one of our products uh, which helps you to secure, uh, let's say, your SAP system, your configuration, or also helps you managing uh, all the critical authorizations within an SAP system. So finding all the weaknesses before an attacker can break into your system and avoid that. Uh, And there, as Andreas mentioned, we do have a collaboration together with SAP. So there is a technical integration, uh, which is currently in development. So this is a development snapshot I'm going to present, uh, which is going to be uh, also available, let's say, this year. And later on, there will be this claimer that whatever I say can change and so on. You know how this works. Okay, so let's get started. And that works as well. Um, so for your short uh, introduction into a system profiler who haven't, hasn't heard so far about system profiler, let me just double check. Uh, yes, works perfectly. Okay, so system profiler integrates into your SAP landscape. You have a central system from which you can connect to all your target systems. You can analyze, you can analyze, um, ABAP stacks, you can analyze uh, Java stacks, you can analyze HANA stacks or uh, HANA databases, and you can in the future also scan on the operating system level. Uh, it works basically so that you do have a central policy which you can define, which contains all similar to a virus scanner, all the signatures, the information, the security settings, what are we expecting, and then we are going to check um, Uh, the systems in the landscape. Here it is. So uh, we will validate all the stuff, pull back the results, and have some monitoring and uh, reporting on the topic. So this is really just a quick wrap up for those people who hadn't been in the system profiler sessions, maybe haven't been in the code profiler, transport profiler sessions. So as I said, uh, we do have uh, inspection policies. Uh, one of the interesting policy, and what, that's also one of the parts um, that we now uh, use to, to drive this partnership together with SAP, is the called DSAG Prüfleitfaden policy. Um, it's not meant to be a standard if you look into the introduction of the document, uh, but everyone is treating it as a standard. And everyone is asking for co compliance against uh, that specific piece of paper. And it's also translated uh, to English. Uh, it provides, let's say, a huge amount of, of uh, tests, how you can analyze an SAP system. I'm going to talk about that later on. And then we do have some uh, overview, a finding manager where you can aggregate all the results. Um, we, as I said, have an architecture where we can scan the whole landscape. So we have la very large customers where we connect like several hundred system uh, to that central machine and analyze all the security statuses of these boxes. And one of the cool features is actually, which I personally really like, because you can use that for whatever you want. Uh, if you have, let's say, a programming background, is you can completely customize all existing test cases. You can uh, match it according to your existing policy, but you can also write your own uh, test cases, which gives you the possibility to basically whatever you have defined as a policy or rule, you can easily integrate this. One customer, we even use this for a dedicated license, uh, tracking license uh, counting mechanism. So if you do have special contracts, that's also an option how you can use the uh, product. Okay, so how does it look like? Uh, you, you basically define a landscape, scan in 
make an inspection and you get uh, so-called run IDs, you get the information about the connected systems, the runtime, uh, the status, you can pull the logs, and uh, of course you get all the results I'm going to show later on with red lights, green lights, and so on. So it, it does not only show you uh, where you have an incompliance, but it shows, shows you also the compliant parameters. Uh, we do also offer a dashboard, and you can also have uh, trend reporting. So these are just uh, two example screenshots from that dashboard where you can basically filter for, for, for various KPIs uh, to analyze the health state of your landscape. Now we are getting more into the interesting part, more uh, the technical stuff. Uh, if you had a demo down beneath there at Marco or at, um, at Arndt, um, then you maybe have seen that they expand all those test cases and you really get a huge amount of test cases um, which you can use to, to monitor the health state and the security state of your system. So various areas are, are covered. Um, just to name some of them, uh, as I said, uh, authorizations, policies. Uh, we also go for non-security stuff, so business continuity. You can scan whether your RC connections are, are working, whether the authorizations are even working. Uh, that's also uh, very frequently a, a, a fun part where you do systems, I don't know, with hundreds of systems. Recently I've seen a customer where we do have 15,000 RSC connections and uh, 4,500 of these have technical users behind it. So you can imagine how complicated it is within this landscape to ensure that these technical users cannot be abused. Just by having, let's say, two high privileges as one simple example, or by upward connections, or having callback security. Uh, a thing I presented in 2015 on the Troopers conference. So now let's talk about the German word, DSAG, ERP Prüfleitfaden. So there is a first version from 2009, and there is a new version from 2015, and uh, this is now a German screenshot. So sorry for the one person back behind, um, but it basically says, um, la 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 la, uh, it, the version from 2015 is, is extending the version from 2009, uh, and the second part is still valid. This is what you read in the introduction. So everyone knows if you make a check for that document, you use both documents. Um, then there is a second part. Uh, when we were analyzing for, for that document, I was really missing many, many, many test cases, and I was kind of confused. And then I found one section. Uh, that's on page 39, simple. So there are some additional checks. Um, so checking for who can access generically all remote enabled function modules. Who can access generically via SE16 all database tables? Uh, so really the, the critical stuff. And this is sum up execution of reports, debugging and replay. So these are the things you, you already know you don't want to have in your system. And you have that one, one section. And it says uh, it's recommended uh, to use uh, the DSAG Prüfleitfaden to, to make these checks. So there it is, there's your link to the version 2009. You don't see it, but it's there. So this is, this is the one central sentence here. And um, what you end up is having three chapters you need to take also into account, uh, which are like 25 pages of tests. So these are many, many, many tests you should also take into account. Um, I made recently a post in the forum. Um, I think the DSAG is going to provide a new version. I know this is, this is really a complicated job. And most likely when they did the rewrite, they had technical people for some of the areas, but not all the areas. And then 
my imagination as they decided to, to just say, okay, we focus on the topics where we know, and for the old part, we just let it stay in the same way. Um, which is okay from my perspective, but it is challenging because nowadays I see that everyone is requesting from us, can you scan for compliance against this uh, pre flight fund? And then the question is, what is the pre flight fund? Right? So no one is taking care about that. And uh, I fear that some people, especially, let's say, uh, young auditors will just miss this. And that's not great. Uh, what you get from, from a system profiler is like already a 90% plus uh, coverage. Here I mentioned just, just the ABAP uh, checks as an example uh, in version 3.2. Uh, we had around 170 uh, DSAG related test cases. And there are some complementary checks where DSAG um, asks you to basically perform some checks on the existing logs to analyze whether someone used actually uh, debug and replace, and those are things you can easily also implement in ETD, and which we have done in our company as, let's say, custom patterns for uh, ETD. So using that new integration, um, you get various benefits. So we, we have a direct technical integration between the two, uh, two products, so there's a direct interface. And now ETD can leverage from all the scanning results and provide additional input for all these existing patterns. I don't know, how many people have seen ETD so far? How many, okay. So enterprise threat detection, that's a product, ETD, I'm always referring, sorry for that, <laughs> for these uh, acronyms. Um, Let's say it's, it's uh, kind of comparable to, uh, uh, to those SIEM solutions, but specifically focusing for SAP security. You can easily customize it, you can enhance it, you can also connect non-SAP systems, but the primarily goal is really, um, or let's say, the roots from it, where it came is uh, uh, analyzing the SAP systems. And there, um, what it does, it, it pulls all the locks, or you can push all the locks to the system, and then you can run your patterns and standardizes. It's done doing some sort of normalization, and it's already a huge benefit for, for companies if you do have a central lock. I see very frequently in all these audits that people do that already on the operating system level. So syslog, maybe many people know about. For Windows, they're uh, also uh, frequently monitoring used, but security audit lock. Maybe the auditor said, uh, yeah, please turn it on. But that's all what is happening. Uh, sometimes in the defense industry, finance industry, uh, the, these industries have uh, stricter industries, if I can say, uh, stricter policies. So these enable that. But by default, the security audit lock, security audit lock sounds like it's, it's meant to be enabled. But it's not enabled by default. And there you get a lot of critical information, whether a user tried to access, whether a user um, entered a wrong password. So that's critical information if the people are, let's say, starting to play around with your system. And the idea behind uh, ETD is to have something where you can react on events. So system profiler is primarily, let's say, primarily working on the proactive approach. We scan in advance, we analyze the system, we check for information security weaknesses, how I would call them. So we know there's an insecure setting, but we hope that it hasn't been exploited. Let's just say we hope that it hasn't been exploited. While ETD goes in the other direction and says, I'm pulling all the data, live data, all the logs, and then you can analyze for is there an attack happening or, or is there something going on wrong? Okay. So um, if we put in all that information from System Profiler into ETD, then we can also enhance tremendously the false positive rate. So we have some use cases um, from which we can leverage and from which you can leverage. Um, so uh, let's go into the technical part, think about uh, 
you make a client copy in your system. And you do it the way how SAP describes it. Then you do have a pro profile parameter that you do have to set. So that's lock in automatic user substar. Everyone who is checking regularly for security knows that. This is an old one. So if the user substar is not existing, an attacker can log onto the client using substar and the password pass. So what can ETD now do? Uh, we can combine that information and specifically gain an alert because it's a difference whether substar logs on as a standard procedure, let's say in an emergency case, maybe I use substar as an emergency user, and it's a difference if substar logs on with a standard password or a well-known password. That should not happen. And especially if that is successful, then this is uh, for sure suspicious and uh, meant to be analyzed. So in the same way, um, we can use that also for all the other standard users as an example to get an understanding. Um, if someone is accessing the system by a standard password, because for me that's a difference. So if I change the password, then maybe it's okay that during all these upgrades, uh, you log on to the system with uh, DDIC, right? You do the upgrades, you log on with DDIC, so that's everyone. Uh, doing, but if you log on with DDIC and you do have a standard password, then that's a different situation. Unless you are the basis administrator who wants to change the password. Okay. So uh, one remark here uh, for ETD. So ETD will only scan for everything where you do have a lock entry. That there's a huge amount of logs in an SAP system, a workload statistic, HTTP log, security audit log, user change log, uh, and so on and so forth. And you can co also connect additional logs, but it will only scan for log entries. So if there is no log entry, it cannot report something. And this is where, let's say, uh, the joint approach also comes together for, for a new case. Uh, let's assume we have someone who is attacking the system, but he's not leaving a trace as in a standard log file, or he is fast enough to modify the corresponding log files before the data is sent to ETD, which as of today is still a possibility, which might change in the future. So let's assume I have the standard case, I lost my password, I'm the basis administrator, I just log on uh, using SQL plus, so on the operating system this system level, I go to the system, I connect to the database, I just update a password. Then I can afterwards log on to the system. This way I can also create a new user and I can even assign that user arbitrary authorizations. Because in the end, authorizations within the SAP system are just an entry in a database table. If you know the proper database table, you just do the insert and afterwards you have the corresponding authorizations. So, um, and in the same way, it, it's not only that you, uh, for example, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean or it's not necessary that you use the database. You can use the transport mechanism in the same way. So uh, just install a transport, put on the additional entries for the tables and then you have the same situation. So you can create a transport of death, let's say it in that way. So what we do here is uh, with System Profiler, we can specifically scan for these kind of, let's say, indications for a backdoor or, or uh, for, for a hacking attempt where someone really bypassed all the standards, uh, where we do see additional users and, for example, we don't have any change log entry. Very suspicious. So that information is also sent to ETD and then we can also raise uh, an alert using ETD. Okay, so let's go uh, into the details. Uh, so for that, it's a demonstration. It shows stuff being under development so it can change. And that should be the technical version of the disclaimer. Okay. So, what we do here is uh, we just log on to System Profiler. This is uh, the cockpit from which you can start, uh, start scans in your landscape. Um, here we just pre-select uh, uh, 
the test case group to scan for all incompliances of the DSAG uh, pre-flight faden. Uh, and then you can start the inspection. Uh, you can also select the systems uh, to which you do wanna want to perform the scan. So um, you just click on the button and in the background it will do all the analysis. Um, so here we scanned multiple systems and uh, let's just uh, pick one of these and uh, make a short stop here. So as you can see, uh, we are currently scanning here, uh, let's say for password policy on a HANA system, we have various checks that you do need to perform according to the, uh, to the uh, pre-flight faden. And one of the checks is also uh, to see uh, how long, what's the lifetime of a password. So here we have the setting 182. Um, we also give you information on the finding uh, and we give you also the reference um, what we do recommend and uh, you can also get the information regarding risk and the link to the corresponding security guides uh, where you can, or policies where you can get and grab those uh, information. So, in the same way uh, we can look for an ABAP stack um, also here a huge amount of various different test cases. So here uh, amount of users having sub all um, and so on and so forth. I don't want to go through all of these. So maybe just uh, pick this one um, where we also, like I said, just get the information. Um, did someone just recently get SAP all assigned. And we are not only looking at those user change logs, we are effectively analyzing all the system, the database tables, authorizations, and by that we can also detect if someone um, attacked the system. Here we jump into ETD, so this is our local installation at Virtual Forge. Um, uh, we have various logs connected and one of the things uh, you will not see uh, in your ETD installation yet, but which will, uh, which could potentially come with the next SP of ETD, is that you get uh, information for parameters, and all the all these fields will then be also filled um, from System Profiler. So uh, we can now scan for the system. Uh, we checked on earlier, uh, we are now within System Profiler, we get the same test cases, the same information, and we can then, in the next step, also do a drill down. And this is really a technical interface, but you basically see the information that uh, then I can, in the end, also pull up that value. And I can use this also now for reporting and for enhancing all existing standard patterns, like I mentioned uh, earlier before. So that's the integration um, as of today. Uh, that's also the thing I wanted to show you. Um, as you might have noticed, I'm a very technical guy. So. Having said that, I don't know what kind of questions you have. I heard earlier someone just wanted to ask arbitrary questions. I'm really open to any kind of questions, so just go ahead, uh, challenge me, and uh, worst case is that I will answer later. I heard one person earlier who wanted to ask something. So let's go ahead. Later on? Okay. So how many of you have a SIEM system already running? Okay. One, two, three, four, five people. So that gives you already an indication what I said earlier. Not too many people are caring about it. How many of these are taking SAP logs 
into account and analyze or put them as a source into your SIEM system? One person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, please. What we learned is that there's a plan to bring the system profile and SAP DT more closely together. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to I want to have some more information. How is that planned? Mm -hmm. and when will that be ready to use? Yeah, that. And how will be the architecture? <laughs> yeah, the big picture of of that solution. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Let's just say, uh, let me go back to the. You might also uh, use the whiteboard if you like, if you draw yeah, the pictures. Good, good. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so let's look at the architecture. How would you set up ETD? Let's assume you have various system lines consisting of D, Q, and P. Okay, so with ETD you have a so-called uh, SDS, Smart Data Streaming Service, and uh, you have your HANA instance running uh, the ETD add-on. Let's just say, yes, ETD. So from all these systems, you can either push or pull the data, like you prefer it. Um, the SDS will then normalize all the data, okay, and will also do a pseudonymization. At least so, for the so the SDS is an API from from ETD. Let's say it's it's a part of ETD. It's part of ETD. Yeah, it's it's, it's a subcomponent. So, if the people outside talk about ETD, they talk about this, and this is basically the mouth collecting all the information. And then it gets transformed into a standardized format, which is used internally, and then that data is being sent into ETD. Um, this gives you the benefit that you can later on um, perform uh, semantic searches on the data, which is very helpful to analyze the data. So you don't need to know that in log A, a username is called, let's say, B name, and in log B, it's called uh, U name, as an example. So all that information is already going in the same ways. You have different ways how IP addresses, networks, hosts, and all that stuff is uh, printed into the log files. And um, that's a huge benefit when you later create on here various patterns. And if you're inside ETD, maybe uh, you have a triggering point that you say, OK, I have someone who tried 50 times to access the box, and then he successfully connected with a new username. So for five times, maybe you say, okay, someone just made a typo, but if you have like 50 hits or so in the past, I don't know, in the past month, as an example, then you say, okay, this is an indication or it's an alert, I want to investigate this, and then I can just drill down using that forensic lab and get all the information. So that's ETD, for those who may have not worked with ETD yet. So for system profiler, we have a kind of similar, uh, sorry, let's just say uh, central. So we have a central system from which we connect to all the systems. And we also collect all the data, okay? So what you get in advance is that we have here a direct integration back and forth. Um, primarily, of course, pushing all the data, pushing also our security state into ETD. Like I said earlier, there are certain things where you don't see any entry in a log file. Cannot be catched by ETD. But will be provided by a system profiler and can then also be analyzed. And then depending on your architecture, I just... We have five people here who are running a seam. The next question and the next challenge is, of course, um, having the organization to work with the seam. So it's not only about buying a software, but you also need to run it, and someone needs to operate it, someone needs to analyze it. So it's, it's very critical. It's the same with Code Profiler. 
It's very critical to get an understanding that I only get meaningful data and that I don't waste like my time all the day just clicking no, 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 no. And after two days, the one who is operating the box says, ah, uh, I don't care. So I have also seen, seen seam solutions who are basically just this big piece, piece of mouth. It gets collected, but no one is analyzing it. But from a compliance perspective, yes, you have it introduced. You have a seam solution working. Uh, no benefit at all. Um, so this is maybe the big picture architecture. Of course, from a user point of view, uh, uh, you work with both interfaces and you have points where you do get back. So for example, if you, um, or in the future where you can go back, uh, like you want to have details on uh, what's the criticality of, of this uh, profile parameter, why is this critical, why is this an issue, then you can directly jump into, into our information. So that's the idea behind it. Um, when will it be available was also one question. Um, so I'm not the product owner of either of the products. Um, I would just say this here. Um, we have within System Profiler in the next release that is coming out, um, from my understanding, Joachim, maybe you can say yes, uh, in two weeks, everything we need from our side. And uh, if everything works well, uh, then maybe with the next XP, SP, latest, with the successor of that, uh, of ETD, you get the full functionality. So cannot be used as of today, but very near. In the meantime, we can use this, this CEF format, right? To feed? Well, we can already feed ETD, but the important part is that ETD is also evolving and providing a storage where you can, let's say, also store um, um, information from a static check which is, let's say, the foundation to make all these patterns uh, and, and, and this fine-tuning available. And the idea later on is really to, to have the possibility to provide uh, patterns, let's say, in the nearer time. Well, that would be my perspective. Um, whether that's coming or not, I cannot guarantee. Uh, but that would be for sure a great use case to say, OK, you get frequent updates, frequent signatures. And then you can leverage on, let's say, new vulnerabilities, new O-days, how you can easily detect them. So that goes kind of in the direction of, of um, security patch management, which is, from my perspective, at every customer, a huge challenge. Um, the thing with uh, SAP security patch management is you, in addition to just installing the patches, how you would do on Windows, um, a reboot is very annoying in production, so many people have high uptimes and you need to wait for the next maintenance window, so that's horrible. Um, but you also have the situation that everyone fears installing service packs because there's a huge amount of testing. SAP changed the patch policy, so security nodes are now only released for a support package that is not later than 18 months which brings you in the kind of confusing situation that you wait for a longer time, you will actually see less applicable security notes and system recommendation, which is not the case. Um, because it's just like the, the information within the security note from which release is this valid is, of course, depending on those 18 months. Um, on the other hand, and that's the important part, once you install the security node in, let's say, 20, 30% of the cases, especially for, let's say, those nasty ones, the hot news, uh, you need to perform additional manual activities. How many people of you heard about transaction SACF? Three people, four people, five people. Okay, so I assume everyone in your company is running patch management. And if I ask this question, and I, if I don't get an answer, then I already know patch management is maybe applying the patches, but not doing the work afterwards. That's one simple example. Uh, maybe you remember in 2007, 
gateway security, same issue. Uh, lots of manual work to do afterwards, and no one is doing it. We still even see systems today that, are, that have not been properly patched. That can be easily compromised. So why ETD in that case for security patch management? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a consultant, so uh, of course, huge, huge amount of, of uh, red critical alerts is always an issue, but then we need to prioritize, and there are various ways how you can uh, mitigate vulnerabilities. Of course, sometimes you have the possibility to use uh, automation, which also System Profiler provides. Um, but sometimes it's just like you do a risk acceptance, which is also a perfect valid mitigation. And then the question is, when is your next maintenance when, you're, when you can apply all those patches? And uh, I think it tremendously helps that you have the option to see in the near future if the system is under attack, even though it's not being properly patched yet. So at least when someone is starting to do uh, stupid stuff in your system, you have the possibility to react. Um, the forensic investigations I have been involved, um, there are some where the people actually just called because they thought something suspicious, but the attack happened like a year ago. So you don't even have the log files anymore to understand what happened. Then you log onto a system and you see you have running SAP Enterprise Portal not being patched for four years, and you already know, okay, there are like 15 different exploits, how I can own this box. That's a separate problem, but it's scary for me that it was not even noticed, this attack. And uh, I think there has been recently a study, so don't judge me now on, on the number, um, but uh, it was something around 40, 48 days, which is the average time until an attack um, getting is getting noticed. And with ETD, you can drive that down to less than a day, easily. Okay, thank you a lot. I think it's time to, to close then this session and uh, meet us again downstairs in the auditorium. I think you all know that we have, um, we have a nice, let's say, last session with, uh, with the CIO from Bayern Munich. So I hope that I, I see you all downstairs. Frederick, thanks a lot. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.